Hello everyone and welcome back to the Atelier with your host MJ. Guys, today as I promised, I will bring you a topic that we all love or kind of use every single day, which is a fashion. I told you in the Color Psychology episodes that I wasn't going to be explaining the color black and the color white because today we are going to be talking about them and I'm so excited for it because we're going to be talking about the different types of fashion and what colors or what the colors represent not in a brand but when you wear them like as in clothing So, let's start. So, I'm going to drop a coin, which I'll be searching for right now. And whatever comes out first is what I will explain first. They have the types or what the color means on you. So, give me a second. I think I do not have a, a single coin, <laughs> so I'll have to open one of the packages, the little packages that I have with the coins. And well, yeah. So here's the thing. I'm going to be talking to you about all of this, but um, as in for the coins, I do not know. <laughs> I have never really understood which one is the face. And um, in Spanish, it's cara osello. I've never understood that, like the the face of the coin or the other part. I've never really understood it. So we're. I can't open this. Oh my god. We are going to do it a little bit different. But give me a second. Okay, I had to bring my wallet. <laughs> so, we have a coin. The number uh, will mean, we'll explain first the different types and the, the animal <laughs> that is in the back of the coin. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm using a Colombian coin because I'm from Colombia and I live in Colombia. So, we are going to be using the animal from the back to explain the colors. So, we're just going to not drop it, just give it a, a, a I don't know how you say that, uh, like, like a twirling. Okay, not like that. I don't know how to do this, guys. <laughs> We're doing it. One, two, three. Ooh. So, it's the animal. So, we're going first with the other part, which is the colors in what they represent on us when we wear them, which is, I believe, my favorite part of it. And we're going to be starting off with the two colors I didn't explain on the color psychology for brands. That's mostly for brands and for like places you want to go. But this is on you. When you wear them, like what did they represent? You know? So starting off with the color white. Um, it, uh, how can I say this? It reflects. Um, in a sense, an organization. So when you wear this color, it's mostly for you to be like an angel. You know? Sometimes it can seem a little bit distant, but you can use it when you need to show yourself as a neutral person or when beginning new projects, like, oh, my, my mind is fresh and kind of like that. Different to black where instead of representing like purity it's or like openness or like the yeah 
Uh, it and the country it represents that you have a like a, your authority is like present and that you seem like a very powerful person. Mm, sometimes it can be misunder misinterpreted as uh, as if you are a person who always wants what you what yeah like what you want and it, that's it and it's what you want and nobody else can have an opinion on it so unless you want to seem that way like sometimes it can be confusing but it's not what it actually represents so you can use this color when you need someone to take you seriously like you have a very serious meeting then is the perfect moment to use it so for the rest of the colors some of the colors I'm not going to explain all of them because there are quite a lot um, I'm just going to say the, the meaning you know what they represent probably not mandatorily but like yeah <clears throat> so we're going to keep going with C <clears throat> Sorry, my throat. <laughs> We're going to keep going with sea blue, which means... <coughs> oh my god! <laughs> It means loyalty, confidence, um, leadership, and tranquility. And sometimes it can seem a little bit conservative and little to no creative. Because it's like a very safe and secure color that you can use in anything and it will look good. Just put it on and that's it. Like, it's nothing extra. So this one, you can use it for interviews or uh, when you have... Um, um, yeah, mostly interviews. I was going to say college interviews, but that's still an interview, so or uh, work interviews, anything that has to do with interviews, you can use the um, sea blue to use. But for the gray, it is most likely very formal and neutral. Same as color psychology, that has a real relationship. It's exactly the same. It's neutral, like it doesn't really show anything. Um, but it can be interpreted as depressive or that you have lack of energy or confidence. So unless you want to seem like that, which I believe no one wants to, uh, don't use too much of this color. So, yeah. And you can use it when you want to seem a very sophisticated, like, um, where do you want to be sophisticated? I don't know, maybe... When you are... Also, I think that's when you can use it as well for interviews, you know? Not too much, but you can use it. Um, we are going on with the color yellow. Which we are going to compare with the color green. So the color yellow has um, that went off and it wasn't supposed to. I don't know what happened. That's weird. But continuing with the color yellow, we can see that it's mostly like um, a warm tone, which represents um, kindness, joy and a positivity. It can be contrasted or it can be confused as um, too much, you know? Like you're using it too much, it's an excessive. So sometimes many people don't like this color because it seems like you just want to be the spot on everything. So sometimes it can be, for some people, not for everyone, but it can be annoying. You can use it when you want to actually be the center of attention if an event or anything. 
So that's why it's confusing, you know, because it actually what it means. Then when you're supposed to use it, it's actually for like the reason why it is also annoying. And continuing with green, which represents um, calm. Oh, sorry, something went on with this. My computer is literally broken. So if this happens again, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, continuing with the green color, it um, transmits calm, uh, renovation, richness, and balance. So it can seem too formal or very not formal. So it can be either way an excess from both sides, too much or too little. Um, you can use it when you want to be the leader of a group or a project, or when you kind of like want to seem creative. Yeah, so this is the kind of like the color that is mostly most likely to, to make you look this way. This is why so many people use it when they are doing projects. So in case you're wondering for more on getting this information, I'm going to leave the link down below, but it's from a Pinterest, but from a specific page who does these types of um, kind of like revelation information. Uh, so yeah, it's actually pretty well. It's and pretty cool because we are going to continue with the color purple and red. And I don't know if you remember what the this color is meant in the previous episode. I remember because I teach you that the color purple was most likely to see me as a rich person, like a very powerful kind of in a way. But the red one and the other one was like um, very extravagant, like that would make you do some stuff so that it could be dangerous or that it could be um, passionate. So going with purple, looking right now at the picture, it's actually not that different. It actually represents loyalty, richness, power, wisdom, and sensibility. Like, the part of wisdom was not on color psychology. Part two, that one was part two. Go watch it. But it's actually very much of the same. And you can actually see him again, uh, a very artificial person. You know, like plastic surgery. But um, if I mean, if you want to say like that, you can do, it. yeah. But at the same time, it's not like what most people want, and it's not also it's not only that you will seem artificial, or that you seem like the type of girl who wears a lot, but in her head, in her knowledge is very little and it's actually not not a very interesting person but it can also seem like a very pro proponent propotent here listen to the translator say it for me because I don't know how to say it prepotent pre that one okay so You can seem like that. I propone. I tried seeing it before, but I couldn't. So, um, translator is going to become my new best friend. Um, you can use it. Purple. Remember, we're talking about purple, and you can use this color when you want to see modern, modern, or when you have a very formal event. Uh, red. In the other hand, it seems. Again, very similar to what I said in Color Psychology Part 1. This one was Part 1. 
which is energy, strong, and powerful. In both of them, you seem powerful, but in a different way, you know? In one, you can seem a little bit sexier than the other one, which will actually look or seem very strong. Uh, but it can be confusing with, as I said, sens sensuality? Uh, like, that you can seem, like, attractive or that you want to seem hot. So... It can also be confusing with aggression or confrontation. But you can use it every single time that you want to steal a deal or a business. Because the, both of them, purple and red, are very um, very strong colors. So this is kind of like what they will seem like and what they will do. And... Let's see the other colors that we have. So last but not least, we have two other two colors, which are brown and orange. So brown, it means um, stability. And wait, that there's a, a word that I do not know. Credibility. Yeah. So you can seem also like a very trustworthy person, kind of in a way, because it seems like you know a lot about your your topic. So yeah, but same again, it can be confusing because you seem not too careful with yourself. You know, it's a color that you need to know how to use, when to use it, and which with which type of clothing to use because of it and when you can use it uh, when you need to transmit information so that people can actually trust you orange on the other hand it's the same as part one in color psychology it's happy positive but it also represents abundance like too much uh, but it can be confusing with Um, not being mature enough which is kind of like the same thing I said in color psychology part one and when you can use this use it when you need to call attention to take the attention and put it in you so this was color not color psychology but kind of like what colors represent in clothing um, and now we're going off with part two which is the one of the different types of clothing or different types of style more like so music master for the you know uh, types different types of style we are going to see some different types you know there are different ones as I've been saying all along there are there is classic which most of you might kind of like think about the queen of England probably And like the royal family, when you think about classy, like very elegant and very, you know, glam, which is more than elegant, you seem expensive. Boho or bohemian, which is like, how can I say this? Um, farmy, kind of in a way, like relaxed. But at the same time, it's a very... Hmm, I don't know how to describe, describe Bohemian. Bohemian, it's a very relaxed, you know, it's a very relaxed type of style. There is also a casual, which is literally wearing anything. Jeans and a, and a shirt. <laughs> um, 
edgy or uh, as many people would call it but it's not exactly that emo um this is a style that is confusing because it wears a lot of black but it's um it's not emo you know emo is more like with the chains and with completely black and sometimes some uh high socks uh black high socks it's a little bit different edgy is kind of like black like conservative more of that type there is also preppy which is basically people wearing clothes as if they were going to college every single day or to school um but like that are very formal or very you know sometimes they can also wear them <laughs> in a kind of attractive way as in for example uh there is this movie oh, i forgot the name and i love the movie I think we'll all watch it, so this is embarrassing. Um, oh my god, I forget the movie. Well, when I remember, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, it's very kind of like, sometimes it can be attractive, but it's not. There is a minimalist, which is wearing something as simple, with not too many accessories, but it's kind of like a little bit um, on point, or kind of... Uh, a little bit glamorous but most likely casual it's a combination between casual and classic and glam and lastly there is romantic which is um you know very type of like 20th century in France that type if you want to see a little bit of a romantic person who dresses kind of in this way, you can watch uh, Gabby DiMartino's YouTube channel. Which is, she actually wears this type of clothing a lot. So, yeah, probably for sure you're going to watch any of her videos and she's very likely going to be using this type of style. So, um... We are going to start by searching what the first type of style is, which is classic. How it seems a classic per person, you know? So we are going on Pinterest and we are going to search for classic. And it appears, well, wait, classic um, outfits. It seems most people are like the first image and the third image that it appears are a woman with a jean and a white shirt. That's a very classic, like something conservative, but that we all know it's, it's like a go-to and no one will say anything because it's a very normal. But there are also a lot of people who wear a lot of beige in these colors. And it's more like you need to combine it. There is always white, you know? It's a black pant, white shirt, and a gray jacket. That's what you see a lot. But most likely is a jean, a white shirt. A white shirt is everywhere. <laughs> or... Yeah, those are the colors that they use the most. Beige, white, and a jean. Black or, or like a normal jean. Those are the top um, recommendations when you want to wear classic. So if you are a classic person, those are the colors that you must use or that you probably use or that you should use in case you want to be. And, uh, well... That's mostly it, you know? Like, there is not much of a thing. So, we are going to go with glam outfits. As I said, glam is expensive. 
when you are glam, you you see an expensive person, you know, you imagine that. And when you search in Pinterest, that's exactly what it is. It's people using fancy clothing, not mandatorily dresses, but a lot of tuxedos, you can see that. You can also see, well, some dresses, of course, but a lot of sparkles, a lot of, what else? Oh, kind of fluffy things, or silk, like um, shiny silk. And yeah, it's most likely to be shining and to be, yeah, shiny, fluffy, elegant, expensive. That's what it is. That's literally it. And if we continue with the Bohemian, which was the one that I want, that um, that I told you was the most difficult one for me to express you how it normally seems it's actually like as i said very relaxed it's very um i don't give a about the world <laughs> it's a very they use a lot the color kind of like red orange brown white they all they use every single color literally the color palette in Bohemian, there is not one single one that you can be like, as in, for example, the classic, which was black, white, and beige. It's red, green, blue, um, everything. <laughs> you can use literally every color and use very relaxed and flowy and uh, simple clothing. That's what Bohemian literally seems like. Uh, so, we're going to go with the uh, type of outfit that is casual, which um, we all use. It's literally a pair of jeans, a shirt, and a jacket. It's something you can use everywhere, except for a fancy dinner, legitimately. A pair of jeans... Everyone's using jeans or a simple skirt, uh, a shirt, and a jacket. That's mostly it. But there are different kind of like levels of casual type of style. There is a very casual type of style, which is what I've been saying all along. A jean, a shirt, and a jacket. There is another one that is more uh, a little bit fancier. Or, a, yeah, there is one that's a little bit fancier that is not just a simple normal jacket, but it's kind of like a cozy, very fancy, a little bit jacket. There are many things, you know. Um, there are others that are wearing jumpers, which kind of like also seem not too casual, but a little bit more elegant. So you need to search for the kind of like different types of levels of casualness that you want to see in case you want to wear those type of clothing for something. The edgy one is more of... Have you seen those TikTok girls who use... I think they are mom jeans. They use also very comfy kind of sweaters. And a shirt with a neck, a neck shirt. Well, that's edgy. But same thing, as I told you, it seems a little bit emo. Because sometimes use edgy as emo. And they use also kind of like the chains or the uh, Mimo shirts, which are black and white. And, well, there's so much. If we go with preppy, then you can find a lot of things. As in, for example, uh, the movie that I was talking about earlier was Clueless. That's literally preppy. Completely preppy. Those type of, sh of skirts, which are like square shirts with a um, crop top or a sweater that's that goes into the shirt or what else um 
that's one of the types. Uh, preppy can also be, that's most likely what preppy means, you know, but it's kind of like short dresses, short skirts with a sweater or a, a, a very tight shirt and with some sneakers. Most of the times are these girls are using sneakers. So yeah. I mean it's not ugly. I love it. But it's just not my style. If you want to know about my style you can um go and ask me in the comments and I'll tell you my style for the next episode if that happens. If we get to three likes <laughs> it seems like too little but if we get to three likes I will tell you how my style is and what my closet looks like but I, what also I would like it to look like um, but continuing on with the minimalist outfits the most people use again a black jean a black pant or white pants. Uh, not too many jeans I see in here. Uh, tight shirt, mostly beige. And a sweater or jumper that combines with the shirt, that it's the same or a very similar color to the shirt. That's minimalist. Little to no accessories, like the wedding ring in case you're married or the the earrings and a little necklace or nothing yeah that's minimalist as i said you're nothing i mean you are a lot but you are nothing and it's very nice and last but not least we are going with romantic the romantic outfits look like princesses legitimately like you have these shirts that have uh like not shoulder pads but that are very that the shoulders are very flowy like when you imagine i don't know a daisy dress have you listened to the song of like daisy na, 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 na. no copyright so not going to keep thinking, <laughs> but it's it's like a daisy dress, you know, um, like a lady dress, but very classic, glam, and a little bit inspired on the and friends, kind of in a way, for sure. So it's, yeah, it's inspired in France. Let's go and search for this one's aesthetic. And yes, you're going to see, again, the same thing. It's literally a daisy dress. There is nothing different about it. It's just like, imagine a daisy dress, like a very floral, yellow, pastel-y, pa a pastel a uh, yellow pastel dress with leaves that are that are like uh, big big sleeves but that they reach until the shoulder and it's for a picnic a picnic dress is another way of describing a romantic outfit a picnic dress is this thing or a dreamy cottage dress that's it whoops guys that um, audio was cut and it wasn't intentional I was continuing talking and I was talking to myself and then I realized oh my god it stopped recording <laughs> nice and well I didn't say much but yeah basically a uh, romantic outfit is Kind of like has in the imagination or the idea of looking like a picnic dress. It's the most recognizable way of saying romantic 
outfit, a picnic dress. But well, yeah, guys, this this podcast is a little bit long for what I'm usually doing. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been... Um, the length of the podcasts has been increasing and it has been unintentional. So please let me know if you made it until this part, until the very last minutes. If you prefer, if you prefer a short podcast or a long podcast that you can listen for an hour and that you can still kind of like feel you're talking to someone and having fun, let me know. And another thing I wanted to say, because I'm obsessed right now, and I'm a very crazy for this movie. <laughs> I'm in love with it. I'm watching it, and um, I haven't finished, but I need to talk about it. It's Cherry. The movie... I think I talked about it a little bit in the beginning. A movie where Tom Holland, which is amazing, an amazing actor, uh, acts. Same as I always forget her name, but her name is Sierra, or that's the movie name. I'm already confused. Wait, let me search for it. The Cherry Cast. Um, no, yeah. I think her name is Sierra Bravo. I think. <laughs> and this movie, I'm in love, guys. I I really recommend it. I haven't finished it. But it's very emotional. And very weird, in a way. It's not something you're used to. And it's very normal. But it's a very nice movie. So I will recommend it to you. Um, guys, next week... Whoosh. <laughs> next week's episode. Let me know. If you want it to be about movies, like a movie recommendation, or if you would prefer us to, for now, stay in the more artsy uh, painting brushes part of art. Because remember that um, a filmmaking is also a type of art, visual art. So... Uh, don't forget about it and tell me about it. Whoops. Tell me what you prefer. (laughs) And, well, love you guys. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And see you in the next time. Bye.